Okay, we are live. Hello, everybody. My name is Bezad. My name is Risa. And we are here from Yokohama, Japan, to present to you, our devoted audience, the Naked and Famous Denim weekly live stream, the greatest live stream in the history of the internet. And you guys are here, part of it. So we're, we're making history together each and every week. We're going to talk to you guys all about the wonderful wide world of raw denim, mm -hmm. denim in general. Mm -hmm. A few off-topic things, probably, but I'll find never, a way to... Never an off-topic. Never an off-topic. Everything off topic. connects to jeans. That's it. So, uh, welcome. We are tuning in, like I said, from Yokohama, Japan. It is Friday evening for you, Saturday morning for many of us. That's why it's bright and sunny, and it's starting to get... We're getting sunnier and then not sunnier, I don't know. I think we're out. I think we're out of winter officially. We're out of as the dark of, days? Like today, yesterday, today. All right. I think. Well. All I see on the forecast is high of above 15. Fantastic. Well, Mother Nature, Gaia, as you like to be called sometimes, thank you for ending the... Why should I thank you, Mother Nature? You screwed us with all that terrible weather for weeks, so you better... You better keep it up, or else we'll show our revenge somehow. All right. All well, right. Let's take take that, Mother get Nature. Into that. Um, well, let's check in with the chat, everybody. We've got Radio Mick Radio Face. It's a good name. That's a good name. Uh, glow in the dark weft? Question mark. Okay. Exclamation mark. <laughs> Maybe? Question mark. Someday. <laughs> Exclamation mark. <laughs> uh, VD, the producer, is in the house. Hello. Thanks for the Easter sale on the sweatshirts. Picked up one in blush, some upstate stock, incense, and a candle. Fantastic. I hope you uh, I hope you and many others enjoy or, or have taken advantage of the Easter sale that's mm -hmm. going on right now at Tate and Yoko. We'll talk about some of that, some of the, the best deals in the house. The, um, the pink um, sweatshirts are perfect for the season. It's very oh yeah, very Eastery, mm, appropriately oh. appropriately timed. Though you it might miss the Easter bunny when you receive it. Yeah, but I meant more like a spring color. Yeah, it's a very nice. That's true. Shade of pink. That's true. Um, NV writes kind of sunny in New Jersey here. MIJ 13s on patiently waiting for some MIJ 12s and 14 release date and prices. Hint, hint. Happy Easter to all who celebrate. Mm -hmm. Well, we will get you with some we, MIJ 12 release info, not in this live stream, but probably by next. I can, uh, I can, pr I can plug it into the calendar. Yeah, it's, it's coming. It's, it's coming. It's soon. Yeah. MIJ 14, on the other hand. A little ways away. <laughs> Not soon, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, Cheddar Buttersworth, hello, hello. Sitting in Vancouver, BC in some left-hand twill. I was wearing the unbranded jacket earlier today under my rain jacket. A proper Canadian tuxedo for a man in a proper Canadian town. Mm. Now, are there any improper Canadian towns? Towns? Cities, places. I'm going to go with Asbestos, Quebec. Sorry to the residents of Asbestos, is it, is Quebec. It a home of asbestos? Yes, actually, yeah, they were. That's where asbestos, the big asbestos mining. Um, uh, I, they don't do it anymore, but uh, thank goodness. But uh, that's where it all came from. Not all, but I think so, a lot so of it. people still live there. Like it's a, I so think city. so. Yeah, uh -huh. you know. Because, you know, when there's, like, an industry like that, like, and it dies, obviously, you know, asbestos industry dies. Yeah, I wonder what the town is like now, and or if they've renamed it. Oh, I wouldn't should... rename it. I think they should keep it. I don't know. Do you want to, like, live in the, like, dark, like, I don't know, always, like, whenever you write an address, you're like, yeah, the citizen like, of asbestos. Yeah, if I've learned anything from The Simpsons, is that you want more asbestos, more yes, asbestos, yes. more asbestos. So, uh, guys, let us know your thoughts on asbestos. Uh, <laughs> Topher Cobra, happy Friday from California, everybody. Well, happy Friday to you, too. Pierre Moreau is in the house. Hello from Guelph, Ontario, all. Happy Easter. Picked up some gems in the Easter sale. Well, thank you very much. P Pierre was also the, the winner 
of last week's. This oh, yes. week at Tate and Yoko, mm-hmm. uh, 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 word of the day off. Mm. Uh, word of the day off. I don't know. We ha- we need to have an official uh, word of the day. Word of the day, champion. Um, I hope I hope you're enjoying your your, your prize. Uh, some some exclusive Naked and Famous Denim tote bags that, you know, I keep getting people asking me, can I buy the tote bags? Can I buy the tote bags? And uh, for now, they're just for winners. Right. Yeah. I hope this Not that anyone winner. who doesn't have one is a loser. <laughs> but yeah. just for the, pr- they're just for prize winners. Not everybody's a yeah. winner. You know? Winners aren't losers. Yeah, but not everybody is a winner or a loser. You, there's most people are in the middle. So. Or yeah, they're just. Anyways, anyhow. you're all winners in our in our hearts, but we don't uh, have uh, that many tote bags, I guess. Mm. Uh, at some point, you guys can message Brandon on his Instagram and ask him when are the tote bags coming. When are the tote I bags? I wonder coming? though, like maybe. I think enough people asked Brandon about Foreons, right? Yeah, keep... Is there, is there, there any progress Yeah, if there's there? anything I can't get done, just spam Brandon in his Instagram. It's uh, B Svarak, S-B-S-V-A-R-C. Just, he'll love to hear from you. No, but he needs to know but, how yeah. many of us are, you know. Yeah, or, are demanding mm-hmm. the, the new products. Um, Don Checo says... Hey, a hey, hey, and Pharmacus, it's snowing again from Regina, Saskatoon, oh, no. Canada. Staying warm in my MIJ 11s. Well, I hope you do stay warm out there, and I hope the summer or at least the spring hits Regina real soon. Um, Oliver, I bought three jeans I have been eyeing for a while in the sale. Whoops, Oops. whoops. It well, happens. At least you bought it in the, on the sale. That's right. There's a lot of good deals happening right now on Tate and Yoko. The sales section is on fire. Uh, I made sure it was a good sale. I really, I spent l- like l- literally all day Tuesday just refining it and making sure that it, it we're delivering the deals to you. So uh, I know a lot of people t- have taken advantage so far and, and hopefully many of you in the chat have done so as well. This is also like the only sale that happens in the first half of the year, like yeah, right? everything is, else happens after July, yeah. like in July. Yeah, so it's we have the Easter sale, and then we have Fourth of July Canada Day, so Can America Day that happens on like the Canada Day, July first, July fourth weekend, um, and then. We have Labor Day, which is a little bit of a smaller sale. Right, it's in between. Yeah, yeah. like it's it's just yeah a little cute. Too. Yeah, and then we hit Canadian Thanksgiving in October, Black Friday in November, and then Boxing Day in December. Yeah, so from September, yeah. Yeah. I guess September sale is like a pre-sale. Yeah, it's like an appetizer. Even then, Canadian Thanksgiving is a little pre-appetizer right, for Black, Black Friday. Right, because Black Friday is the yeah. main course. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll really, yeah. But anyhow, there's there's always deals to be found. The sales section is pretty good. And our weekly 24-hour special is something that you want to keep an eye out for. And those hit your email box every Wednesday. Uh, so, And you only get notified if you are an email subscriber. Like, we don't let people know what the deal is on Instagram or we don't make it we don't even make like the product page link like it's nowhere on the website like mm-hmm. you get the link in the email now if you're clever you just save that link and check it every week mm-hmm. and you don't subscribe to the newsletter but I wouldn't recommend that because of reasons but uh you need that reminder yeah you go you, you always need the reminder uh all right um okay Ian M Howdy, guys. Checking in from NC, North Carolina. Uh, mountains, wearing my Elephant 12 and Wonder Looper charcoal tee. Nice. Good man. Good t-shirt. Uh, the Toaster Palette, hello from Wisconsin. Good to see you. Uh, Shang Style, hi, everyone. In Sydney today, wearing Midnight Slub Stretch and bought the perfect blue. And another Midnight during the sale. I love <laughs> the fabric. Well, I'm nice. glad that you do, and I'm glad you were able to pick up a second pair. Uh, on sale. 
RF, good to see you, my man. Hello from Chicago, the Windy City. Elephant 12s going strong, 88 straight wears, no washes. We got to see a fade mm -hmm. update on those. Elephant 12. Elephant, uh, Elephant 12. Uh, and uh, he says, I picked up some cr the, the crazy Sakiori kimono shirt on sale. That was on sale? Yeah. I, okay. there was, there was, we didn't make too many of them, and there was like a handful left. Anyhow, good man. Got, mm -hmm. you, you scored a great deal on that. I hope you enjoy it very much. Uh, Melody Murray, hello from Tucson, wearing my undyed Frankensteins on a warm, sunny day. That is a Thanks. great jean to wear this mm -hmm. spring, that's for sure. Kevin Gill, hello, Bayzad and Risa, checking in from Long Beach, California, the LBC, nice. Risa's old hometown. Also Snoop Dogg's yep. old hometown. Both Risa and Snoop Dogg mm -hmm. um, from, the and Cameron Diaz, apparently. Really? Yep. I, I think didn't she know, went know to that. school with Snoop Dogg. That was, well, I think I saw that somewhere. Like, like high school. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's funny. So, uh, that's great. That's it. Um, there's so much drama in the LBC. Mm. Who else is from the LBC? I don't know. Other people. Other people. Um, anyhow, uh, Kevin Gill from LBC, wearing my 18 ounce big slub for the Indigo Invitational. Also, can't wait to get my Indigo hat and start fading it from the Easter sale. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy it. I hope everyone's enjoying all the deals that are going on. If I missed your comment, l spam me, because I'll, I'll probably get to it eventually. Um, everybody, uh, Chris Griffin, Wearing Spring Garden, bought the yellow Tweety cotton for myself and the Sea Island for a possible gift for my father. Very generous. That's a very nice yeah. gift. Let's take a look at the sale that's mm. going on right now at tateandyoko.com. So let's go over there. So you can see the, the spring small deals are in... Oh, small adjustment? Mm -hmm. Okay. The spring deals are in full effect over at tateandyoko.com. We've got the main sale, which is right here. This is, if you click on that, it gives you everything that's on sale right now. But of course, if you click on Easter weekend sale, you can drill it down by discount percentage if uh, you know you want to shop that way. Um, so if you want to go into the 50% off land, there's quite a a lot of deals. Of course, things have been, uh, you know, selling through over the last couple of days. So sizing may be a little bit uh, dried up here and there. But if you're a 29 or 30 or 28, let me put it to you this way. If you're a 28 right now, if you were just a 28, buy anything you see in 28, 29 or 30. Because let me tell you, at some point, you're going to get to those sizes. And you may as well stock up on these good deals. I mean, even if you don't, like a little bit bigger doesn't really hurt you. Like it's not going to be like, oh, this is so unwearable. Yeah. Like you're not going from 28 to like 36. 30 yeah. yeah. So, so be okay. take advantage. Um, one size up, two sizes up. You probably can, you probably can, uh, can handle that. Look at this 18 ounce big slub, 88 bucks, 30 and 31 only available. You know, that's kind of why the deals are there. Um, because things are a little bit, uh, you know, few and far between in terms of uh, uh, available sizes. But if your size is available, you definitely want to take advantage. Now, it's certainly looking like some of the smaller sizes are are what is mostly available. But uh, at least at least fifty percent off land. Let's go over to thirty percent off land, and you can see there's a super guy thirty two king of slub two. That's a good deal. Um, there's a bunch of elephants on sale right now. Uh, there you go, a 32 weird guy for 146 bucks. That's a great deal. Right here, a 32 weird guy, kimono print salvage. That's a good deal. Uh, so there's, there's all, even this, this is the, this is really the Sea Island cotton. There's good sizes available. 31 of the easy guy, that's a popular size. So browse around. And here's another pro tip if you kind of, find it annoying that you can't drill down our website by available sizes, just hit that control F button, type in the size you're looking for and biggity bam. Look at that. You can find exactly what you're looking for by just using that control F key. Now what that is on Mac, I don't know, but there's probably some way to search it on your Apple products as well. 
Uh, so take a look around, see if there's anything uh, for you and take advantage. And if you want to double take advantage, if you want to double take advantage, here's what you do. Find something that you like. Okay, weird guy, camel slub, size 30. That's a good one. Uh, it was a good one when I was a little bit slimmer, but add that to cart. Bam. So you got the deal. That's a great deal already. If you want to double up on the deals, all the naked and famous denim sweatshirts are 50% off when you buy anything. So if you're like the good man BD, you find yourself a pink pullover sweatshirt and you say, hey, I'd like to have one of those too. You pick the medium. It's $178. Add it to cart. And then you go to the cart and biggity bam you get a discount on it, 50% off, 89 bucks. You've got a discount on this already. Sale promos all over the place. Get yourself some good deals. So take advantage of this because another, just, just saying, this deal for the pullover hoodies or the, or the hoodies in general applies to if you buy anything. Yeah. So like BD did. If you, uh, yeah, you buy a small thing. Yeah, if you buy is... some, you know. Wax for your leather patches or belts, add that to cart, biggity bam, you get savings on the sweatshirt. It's like you're getting this for free. It's like it's you're like getting, you're this, getting for free. this and you get extra money. Yeah, so take advantage. You could be clever with it, or you know, you could buy something of regular price, it doesn't matter. We're yeah. making these available to you at a great, great deal for our Easter weekend sale. So, uh, that's a little pro tip mm -hmm. um but uh yeah take advantage there's lots to shop there's also the new matcha salvage which dropped today so if you're looking for uh, a great pair of indigo by green weft natural dye jeans you've got a fantastic option right here look at that beautiful selvage id i love the gradient tone why because yours truly designed it um and just a great texture. Slubby denim, a little bit heavy, 15 ounce. Somebody in the uh, in the YouTube comments mentioned uh, the other day, oh, that's a little heavy for spring, don't you think? I've, and I'm like, yep, yep, a little bit. But it's not hot everywhere, and it's not hot everywhere just yet, right? And 15, I think it just depends on who you are, but like, it's not like unwearable. Yeah. I also think that heavier things like, is stiff and creates like a space in between your mm, leg maybe. and like your your pants and then it's just not it's not a bad thing for the summer yeah i wore the Ecru big slub the 16 ounce mm -hmm. uh raw cotton slub for an entire year i wore them through the summer i never had a problem with them yeah uh it, it certainly depends on who you are i can understand you know some people prefer something prefer to wear something a little lighter in the summer but you know if you're uh a, a, a veteran denim person, then heavier weight options will probably be okay. I mean, Garrett spent his hot summer days in Hong Kong in 32 That's months, it, so. yeah. So be like, be like Garrett. <laughs> be like Garrett. Um, all right, back to the chat. Let's see what we missed out on. Um, uh, BD writes, you'd lose money if you didn't buy a sweatshirt. Yes, that's how that works. <laughs> that's a, that's uh, yeah, a good logic yeah. there. Yeah, Andrew Furusawa, I managed to snag the Matrix Falling Code in 33 Super Guy. Typically, I go for a looser 34, so I hope it fits. Uh, I hope so. Mm -hmm. I heard I have Maxim to thank for that find. Yeah, mm. the guys have been going through the warehouse and finding stuff. <coughs> they found like some elephant, was it 11 jackets? Yeah. Yeah, they found like a whole box of elephant 11 jackets and... Just, and I'm like, just all right, we, we probably could have sold those regular price, you know. And it's not even that long ago yeah. that we had Elephant Eleven, so yeah. I don't know how that got like buried. But anyways, it's a big warehouse. It it's a big warehouse. Yeah. You know, the thing is, things get transferred from one warehouse to the other, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of boxes everywhere, and yeah. sometimes, and sometimes the box just... slips behind another box, and. Yeah, and you just like if nothing is written, and you know yeah. if nobody's cleaning up, then it's just you don't you don't it, open it. It happens. You just so don't open it. Yeah, luckily we've been finding some good treasures lately, and uh, you know right in time for the sale. So uh, you guys get to take big advantage of it. Um, all right, uh, Eric Mendez writes hello from Houston, Texan. Houston, Texan. You're a 
proud Texan from Houston. Been a long time fan, but finally bought my first pair of Naked Famous jeans a month and a half ago. Snagged the Kimono Print Salvage and Easy Guy, and I love them. Well, thank you very Thanks. much. And the lovely Risa here is the one responsible for designing the print on the inside. Uh, so, there you go. Um, uh, what else do we got here? Shank style. How much do Naked Famous sweatshirts shrink? Uh, more shrink compared to heavier weight fabric like Wonder Looper, right? Um, they shrink a little, but not a lot. Even the Wonder Looper sweatshirts, they don't shrink that much. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends on, like, I mean, if you tumble dry, like, the chances of shrinkage is, is larger. But you also, like, can stretch yeah. it out. Like, most of the, like, you know, the knit fabric items, you know, T-shirts, sweatshirts, anything can, like, shrink in the wash. It's, yeah. just, it's just a matter of, like, stretching it out. You can do that after it's dried and you when you're wearing it, but I think it's the easiest if you do it when it's damp, so yeah. that it's not it doesn't take as much you know, force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knit knits do shrink in the wash. It's you 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 all notice it. You have a sh shirt that fits you great. You put it in the wash. It doesn't fit perfectly after wash. Then you put it on. It kind of stretches out to you. But or like when you take it out of the wash, just put your arms in and just you know gently tug yeah. on it in whatever directions you need, and it'll stretch right back. Um, uh, uh, Rice W5 writes, I find big, big heavyweight okay in hot weather if I just, if I'm just casually hanging out and not exerting energy. Yeah, I suppose if you're, um, wearing heavyweight jeans and you're, you know, playing frisbee golf in the middle of the hot days of summer, it may not be the most comfortable pair, but, uh, I'm, I like heavier jeans if, you know, you say you're by the beach at night in the summertime, like it's cool, like it just feels nice to have a little bit of a, a durable jean, especially, you know, you got the bonfire going, it's, it's great. I love the bonfire. You uh, love the fire. Yeah. <laughs> you just love uh, bonfire because it's a bigger version of fire. Yeah, yeah, I sure do. Um, Mike Drop 37, hey Bayzad, how do, often does unbranded brand get restocked? Mm, usually, it could be two times a year, maybe. It depends on the yeah. fabric. The the fourteen ounce indigo gets the most often restocked because they sell the most. Um, and those probably twice a year. Everything else maybe once a year, ish. Yeah. Yeah. Depends. Um. Okay. Uh, a Raphael MC writes: Wonder Looper didn't shrink at all for me. Yeah, they don't shrink that much. Yeah. Um, we we really torture test everything. Yeah, yeah, and if there's, you know, like the average shrinkage is just, you know, uh, uh, just just uh, maybe like if you're, you know, like wearing a medium uh, sweatshirt, maybe like a, an inch in the length or something like that. And if, if it goes above that, like if it goes above like a regular expected um shrinkage from hot washing and tumble dry because that's what we do like we we hot wash and tumble dry and make sure it doesn't shrink more than like, like you know crazy uh, like yeah. it doesn't shrink crazy amount and if it does then we're going to do something about it we, we pre-wash or we'll change the fabric or whatever yeah. so yeah we test everything and even yeah. like whatever shrink that we get out of a garment usually like we'll we'll measure it before it goes in the wash then we torture it hot wash hot dry everything and then whatever shrink we get we measure it and then we'll do like a just a gentle tug and uh you know stretch the garment back out and we'll see what measurements we get and like so long as it stays in that like measurement realm and uh whenever we stretch it out it, it stays stretched out like it generally goes back to pretty close to the original dimensions when you uh after wash so yeah that's how that's how that works even with your jeans generally speaking they'll they'll generally like once you've worn them you know you put them in the wash i know a lot of people throw their jeans in the dryer it just eventually happens some people you, you get you get lazy you know everything goes in the you know that's the way it is you know at, at, I don't know. That's just the way it is for me. Um, but you know, you you put them back on after they've been washed, and they feel a little snug. But at, by the end of the day, they kind of feel normal. And even if you need a little bit of extra length, hit it with the steamer, maybe from like the knee down, and just tug on the fabric, and you'll get like 
you can get a couple of centimeters back by yeah. doing that. But you know, another like thing, if you don't notice, like jeans tend to shrink on the like width, like it, it's. It's my, I mean, like length, width, both, but you know, you feel it more in the in the um, width. I feel, and you know, length, you see it more because it's it's such a long length that you're dealing with that, like you know, obviously, like you, just the same percentage, but um, slightly more visible, like a bigger change from the original um, dimensions. Uh, but with with knits, it's mostly in the length that that it shrinks. Yeah. So, just just something to keep in mind. Clothed and unknown with a great comment. Did the luxury flowers dusty rose jacket get shelved, or did I miss it completely? Oh, you know what happened with that? Just forgot about it. Yes, I see. I'm that. going to I send an email on Monday. I haven't. Um, I haven't like deleted the products from the back yeah. end because I had created the products already yeah. and you know that's just kind of hidden yeah. but and I see it every now and then it's like oh I wonder if yeah. I ever make it thank you for the reminder <laughs> we'll we'll try to put that in production ASAP or Rooney that's the official <laughs> term um really great yeah so thank you see that's why we have these live streams you can't we can't remember everything but the internet remembers everything um, RBD Apollo Ali writes, I got the Ash Denim on sale and I couldn't find much info online. What season was it from and any other info about it? Love the breakdowns y'all do. Um, yeah, we didn't make a video for that yeah. item. Because that was, was probably like pre-video a... era, maybe. Mm, or the like sometimes we do have like there's some products that we yeah, just don't have time just, to get like, around making a video it. about yeah fall winter 22 was it yeah it's i don't think it was it wasn't like before the videos like we've been mm, doing maybe we we're doing well. videos but it's it's just like it, it also like unfortunately sometimes like there's not that much to talk about on mm. certain denim, like you, you know, it's it's not like hmm. That was part of like uh, you know when we did last year, we had a collection that came out for Black Friday. Mm -hmm. That was something that we did for a, a I don't remember what season, might have been Fall Winter twenty two Black Friday collection. So we had a collection of jeans that we made yeah. specifically to come out during the Black Friday so that we can have, you know, extra promotions going on. So uh, if I remember correctly, I don't remember the weight offhand, but no, it, black it, it, it by black white, by white denim. Yeah. And we don't do a lot of black by white denim in general, so it was kind of nice to add that to the collection and mm -hmm. have something available. Yeah. Um, but it's just one of those, like, basic ones that we didn't, like, you know... Um, it wasn't like a crazy, you know, design process and uh -huh. figuring out how to make it. It was more of a basic um, core type denim. Yeah. So we didn't make a video, I guess. Right. Uh, Pedro, I haven't thrown my jeans in the dryer in ages unless I'm trying to shrink them. Mm. All good, right. Good for you. It's that, it's better for clothes that, in general. Definitely. Don't put it in the yeah. tumble dryer, but it is very yeah. convenient. Yeah. Uh, BD writes, my MIJ7s always go in the dryer now. The only pair I do that with tend to hang dry most. Mm. There you go. Yeah, I want, I've been hang drying my, they're not even dry. I just hang some of my jeans out in the sun on sunny days these days because I want the ultraviolet UV rays to do nature's work and fade them. Mm -hmm. um, I think I that where we live, the sun is especially strong. Because if I have like a magazine on the coffee table for a couple of, some, I have a coffee table that just got a pile of magazines on it. Sometimes I haven't touched it in a while and, you know, you pick it up and I'm like, wow, did the sun destroy that cover. Uh, and like our couch is just completely sunbaked. Mm -hmm. um, it's also like our, our windows are not like UV, UV coated yeah. at all. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just, I want the power of the sun to yeah. do some fading and on my jeans. Also, it's like when you hang something in the sun and then you bring it in, it smells like the sun, mm. and I love it. That's it. That's it. You know, uh, I have to ask. Uh, I know that there's a pair of like natural indigos at Tate and Yoko that were. Th I guess they left them in the window forever, 
okay. in uh, at the store, and the sun like cooked them, mm-hmm. and so like they're they're faded and sun cooked to like almost white. And really? uh, yeah, they should do a fade review on those. Um, <laughs> sun fading. Yeah, so sun fading. I'm gonna I'm just gonna give them give them the give it a try myself. Yeah. Well, the key uh, is to uh, like flip. Yeah, yeah, you gotta you, <laughs> you gotta, gotta flip. flip. Um, uh, Arlen H writes question for everyone. I've heard that you should dry jeans out out of the sun. Does it harm the denims? Um, Again, it's the the, yeah, the sun yeah. can do a, a damage on yeah. the the color, the dye. Yeah. For sure. But let's it that look. If you want to torture your jeans, you leave them out on the hottest days every day, like consistently. But like you know, most people in Japan, for example, like dry their jeans, dry all of their clothes outside. So. If you're just leaving them out to dry and then you take them in, that's not gonna harm your jeans. But if you leave them out in the sun for days, and days, days and days and days and days and weeks and months on end, then it's going to affect the color. Yeah, yeah. It's just like you know, like how much do you, you know what I mean? Like you're not supposed to put them in the the dryer because it's eventually like less than like shorten the lifespan of the fabric it does damage you know little yeah. by little yeah but every now and then you throw it in the in the, the dryer it's not gonna really change the yeah. trajectory of, right. of jeans yeah. so but it also you know like jeans or sweatshirt the more you put them in the dryer sometimes i mean it, they get softer because you are kind of fl- like breaking down some of the fibers and it's you know becoming a little bit fluffy on the ends so there is also a trade-off there as well, so you know it, it depends what you're looking yeah. for. But I um, think the the bottom line is that jeans in general is a tough piece of clothing. So yeah. you can treat them however you want; they will survive most that's, things. That's it. Um, Mushy monkey writes: Would you use a tied pen on your jeans? Um, I wouldn't recommend it on like a a tied pen or like OxyClean or things like that. I don't think that there's any bleach in a Tide pen, but oh, but it's detergent that you're using on a very small area, mm-hmm. and so if you're it when you use the blotch. right, it's gonna make a blotch. When you use detergent in the wash, it affects the entire jean. So whatever happens, you know, maybe it's gonna pull up the stain or whatever. But say it does change the color of the jean, it's gonna do it more uniformly. And if you start like spot treating here and there you'll probably end up with a little bit of a, a blotchiness. Now, you know, that's not to say that, like, if you use a very, very small amount and, you know, you, you spread it out a little bit, you know, but... But but I think those should be used in conjunction with washing. Yeah. So that, like, it doesn't, like, if you use a Tide pen and then, and then never wash your jeans, then it's likely that it's going to make, a, a, you know, a stain Yeah. You, kind of thing. And, and just... Be, make sure you know what's in it because if there is some kind of bleaching agent then it's definitely on a dark indigo denim like a raw denim it's gonna leave a mark yeah like, even even though like even the crude like things too yeah. even white like you think it's white it's not like the yeah. whitest white so right. sometimes you can make a stain yeah um if there's a stain you're trying to get out most no, of it treat, is, treat it with yeah. those things first, like the spot, treat it, and then put it in the wash. So right. like it, it takes out the, the things, so, so it stops it from like continuously taking out dye or whatever. Yeah, there you go. Um, BD, for a good summer day jean, dry, uh, e- sorry, for a good summer day jean, dry, uh, even just to get even just to get most of the water out and bring inside for the rest. Okay, mm. so that's BD's tip. Uh, on a nice summer day, dry the jeans outside for a little bit, and then uh, once they're mostly dry, bring them in. Let uh, You can finish the drying part indoors. Um, Thomas, Bezad, the people want jorts. Well, we provide we, you. We, we provide you with... All kinds of options. Mm-hmm. So the jorts, if you want jorts... All you need to do is buy. Actually, it's a good time to buy jorts because we have a lot of things on sale. So let's talk about the jort making process. So if you head over to Tate and Yoko.com, this also works on NakedAndFamousDenimNYC.com, anywhere we where we do hemming. Uh, but here's a good example. Let's go to the Easter weekend sale and let's find 
Let's go to 60% off land. Let's see what we can find here. Here you go. Uh, yeah, I would say <laughs> blanket line. Blanket <laughs> line is not going to make a good jort. Um, but uh, a lot of super guys. A lot of super guys. Okay, let's just go over here. We got a weird guy. Scratch and sniff size 28. Now oh, whatever. Super guy. Scratch and sniff 28. That's a good jort to make. Um, I normally wear a 32, 33, but in the super guy, maybe I'll go up to a 34 just to make sure that I've got a little extra room. Add those to cart. They're 78 bucks. That's a pretty good deal already. And now what you want to do is when you check out hem two wooden seam, do you want two inch inseam? <laughs> I am serious. If you write something like you know something like you know anything um under like 25 you you want to like if you want to avoid back and forth with the, the tatsunoko stuff you just write you know you, you write 12 inches i want shorts yeah then like we know we yeah, don't yeah. need to like check in with you yeah we, if you we just want like write 12 inches we will call you and make sure you yeah. want actually 12 inches yeah because we cut you know once we cut the jeans yeah so uh if you want jean if you want jean shorts we can do this whatever inseam you want and if you're a very very rich man i'm talking rich man you put in do not do this unless you want it unless, unless you, you know, know what this is and you want it i'm not going to tell you what it is because if i have out. to tell you you can't afford it but if you know what this is, you can get it, and we'll do it. So, yeah, that's that. Um, <laughs> there you have it. Uh, Thomas, for a straightish pair of jorts, do you think True Guy is the move? I'm a big dude, and there isn't much in size 38. Yeah, I think True Guy is definitely the move in that respect. In jorts, uh, like in shorts. But you know what? In jorts, even easy guy would work because once you're at the top of the thigh, it, the taper doesn't apply. Yeah, and also it's like, I think you want extra room in your in your hip more than like jeans. Because shorts looks a little weird when it's really tight on the yeah. top block. So like you want extra room. Easy guy has extra room, and the the taper doesn't yeah. matter, so it's a good option. Yeah. Strong guy is a good option too. I I I think you know, and maybe try to go like a, a one size up than usual. I would I, I would recommend that because like I've had shorts that are like tight, and it's like it's just not comfortable, not great. They look good though. <laughs> they look good. Um, cathedral ring. Uh, uh, I couldn't find a heated debate on lint rollers. I was surprised. Why is there heated debate? I, I don't know how rollers. heated a debate on lint rollers can get. I suppose the only concern with lint rollers is, do they leave a f like a film on the clothing that eventually makes them more prone to attracting lint and dust? Really? I mean, heard some that. I've heard that. I don't personally experience that, and we use a lot of lint rollers in this house. We have lint rollers everywhere. We've gotten to the point where, you know, we had one or two, and, like, they would always move around. Mm -hmm. So now we have, like, ten around the house, and it's just, they're, we, they're everywhere. So yeah. any... There's always one in, what? like, the bedroom. There's always one in the washroom area. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then there's always one somewhere in the living room, but the, the living room one is the living always... living room like, kind of moves around, but yeah. we it's keep just, them everywhere. It's just, we know they're going to get moved around, so you just we just keep having them everywhere. Um, uh, and that we've tried so many different kinds of lint rollers, right. but I think IKEA one is a very good option. The cost performance is mm. very good on that. Justin writes, lint rollers are a huge waste of plastic. Uh, possibly. Is uh, it plastic? It's paper, no? I don't know. It is paper. I, I, I it's feel paper. like is it's it paper plastic? with some kind know. of adhesive. But I could be wrong. I don't know. They're, they're, they're made of different ways. But if you want to talk about huge wastes of plastic, uh, Japan is not the country. Yes. <laughs> we uh, love plastic in this country. Um, 
Yeah, we wrap everything in multiple layers. The plastic is 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 covered in plastic to prevent the plastic from being damaged yeah. by other I'm plastic. I'm so afraid of dirt and particles and things like yeah. that that we cover everything with plastic. Yeah, and to be fair, just here's just fun facts about Japan is that garbage day isn't like the way the garbage works in this country is like everything has to be separated. Like yes, and yeah. we do like um, what do you call it? The recycled yeah. uh, plastic. Every yeah. plastic thing, like we just put it in the recycle. Yeah. So there's a plastic. There's there's so like there's plastics, and then there's plastic bottles and cans. And depending, I guess there's some places that will make you separate cans from bottles. Our, our where we live, cans and bottles go in one place. Plastics are a separate entity, and that goes in another uh, uh, garbage. And then there's regular garbage. Um, so regular garbage is like combustible. Anything, I guess, you know, whatever is burnable or buryable. I don't yeah. know how they, they deal with the garbage different ways here. Um, paper. Paper. Oh, yeah. Paper is a separate day also. So any paper products. But I find it like like all like the Coke bottles, because it, it's all plastic, right? But the lid and the label, that goes in plastic recycling. And then the bottle itself goes yeah. in bottle and recycling. technically, that part that comes like stays on the bottle yeah. um, after you remove the, uh-huh. the uh, cap is uh, supposed to go on the, the thing uh-huh. but they did figure out like I, I watched a, a, some kind of TV segment about uh-huh. it and that like they, they it's not uh, that big of a deal for them to separate that like I guess they have a way to do, deal with mm-hmm. that but like I, I used to like stress about it. It's like, oh, I gotta take off that ring, and it's just <laughs> yeah. like it's such a hassle. But right. yeah, it's it's um, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like as much as we waste plastic, we try to not yeah. waste too much. I guess. Yeah, it it. Um, I would say, well, recycling in this country is taken very seriously. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's in my opinion, like in Canada and in the states, it's like it's taken way too casually. It's like, oh yeah, it's something Don't that you do if you're into it kind of thing. There's, a, like... there's a blue box, and anything that we think is recycling <laughs> goes in there. Whereas here, they're like, no, you see, that plastic and that plastic are technically different plastics, so they need to be separated so that they can be properly disposed of. Yeah. Uh, like, like, for instance, in Tokyo, like, most places in Tokyo, you don't separate plastic, I don't think. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. All right. They, they do, like, different, like, parts. Like, they have different machines or different ways of... The, and you still have to go through. Somebody has to go through them, whether, you know, mechanically or manually, so... Hmm. Well, anyhow, there's yeah. a little no- garbage garbage knowledge for you guys. Uh, so there you go. Uh, uh, good question coming up from Pierre Murrow. Guys, why is the Selvage line always smaller on the MIJ versus Made in Canada? Um, so, it's a design decision. Yeah, bingo. It's, it's just a design decision to kind of make the MIJ collection a little bit different uh, from what you might see out there. And I really like that that out seam part is called a uh, it's called like a it's called a busted out seam and on the mij line we do a micro busted out seam um but yeah it's all it's all just aesthetics so when you flip that cuff your selvage looks a little bit different than everything else out there in the world uh melody murray writes risa what's the difference between the country shirt versus the easy shirt i'm considering purchasing a country shirt for the first time i have two easy shirts currently country shirt is a little bit more uh fitted like it's it's not like tight it doesn't have like back darts or anything but it it is more of like a compact silhouette whereas easy shirt is a lot more like boxier like roomier um silhouette yeah um wired different rights hey risa just wanted to ask why some of the women's jeans inseams are so long like the sky high arrows have an inseam of 35 inches is it because the jeans are meant to be worn a certain way 35 that would if it's a 35 that's definitely an oversight somewhere somebody did not cut that at the right inseam what fit was that uh i think sky high arrow she wrote arrow 
No, that's a that's a mistake. Yeah, that's a yeah. mistake. Because yeah, we go, I think thirty two. Yeah, I think it, the most yeah. jeans have thirty two. Yeah, yeah. Any inseam decisions that we make, it's not about um, styling, hmm. uh, except for what might come out on Monday. Right. Should we? Should we talk? Yeah, I'm going to make it. These are going to be for purchase on Monday. Right. Okay, let's, you know. Well, yeah, I guess. Me and you, we like, we know, you know, this is between me and you. And, uh, I'm going to have secrets. You can't have secrets. Where is it? So we have a new fit coming out on Monday. Brand new fit coming out on Monday. And, uh. You guys are going to get the first preview of it. And now this comes from, you know, so many people, they just, they just keep asking me, you know, when are the long inseams coming? You know, I'm, I'm a tall king. I have a 39 inch inseam. You know, I'm so tall. It's like they're bragging to me almost in these, in these newsletters, you know, sorry, in the emails, like, they're like 34 inches. That's for like midgets. That's so that's short. You know, I can't wear that. I need a 36 inch inseam. I need a 30, uh, 38 inch inseam. I need a 40 inch inseam. I'm so tall. I'm like, okay, guys, enough, enough. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to finally cover it for you. And these are coming on Monday. They're going to be available for one day only. So all of you tall, tall people will finally have the long, long guy. The long, the long, long, long guy. guy. Okay. 100 inch inseam. 100 inches. This is not a Photoshop. This looks, this may look like no. a Photoshop. It's not. Yeah. It is not not a so the real thing so for all you tall kings out there no more complaints yeah no more complaints you've got it i know there's going to be a couple of guys who are going to be like oh i need a 103 inch inseam i'm i'm so tall you know okay sorry but for everyone else 100 inch inseam true guy leg so straight leg we can hem it to whatever you want if you need a 75 inch inseam because you're short or something we can do it um, it's going to come in left-hand twill. Pricing will be available on Monday. They're going to be a little more expensive. There's a lot yeah. more fabric here that we need to work with. But uh, for all you tall dudes and dudettes out there, we've got the long, long guy. And if you're like a short dude like, uh, you know, Garrett over here, then maybe it's just, hold on, that's going to take a second to load. Uh, if you're a shorter person you know, uh, 30, 32 inch inseam, you know, this is what they're going to look like on you, right? But so, if you love stacks, yeah, I yeah. mean... If you love is, the stacks, you can do it. Or if you're a tall king like Justin over here, you can uh, just, you know, you can live your life comfortably, finally, yeah. you know? And you can even cuff it, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, it's enough room for everybody to make a little cuff. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to make a little cuff here, you can. So uh, you got it. We're going to have these available on Monday, one day only. It's the long, long guy. So whether you've, you've got the, the height that, you know, God himself blessed you with, or if you're a, a short king, you know, with a 32-inch inseam like uh, Garrett over here, um, then, you know, we've got you covered right? This is a gene for everybody. Mm -hmm. This is the most inclusive gene ever, whether you have no inseam or a hundred inch inseam. I mm -hmm. guess if you're taller than that, we might not have you covered, but we're, we're going to have you covered. So I mean, we're going to cover most everybody. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Mo most people on yeah. planet earth should, we should be able to get them with this one. Yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, there you have it. Everybody coming, coming soon. It's pre-order. Yeah. yeah, it's a pre it's a pre-order no only. Yeah, no no uh, no returns, and uh, I wouldn't recommend getting them hemmed any shorter than like thirty four inches because that would just be <laughs> waste a waste of time. But, but you will get the extra 
time it's parched. So if you want a long like yeah. thing of yeah. denim. Yeah. Mike Trop 37, short kings and and tall princes. Yeah, we're, we've got them all. Everyone's covered. Um, Seven ninety nine. I hope Garrett goes climbing in those. You know he will. Um, Pierre Morel writes the John Holmes special. You have to be uh, of a certain age to get that reference. I hear you. Uh, Jameson Keating, Long Guy Bezad special. Uh, that would be the John's John Holmes special. Um, uh, <laughs> don't look it up. Um, Okay, actually, these stacks look awesome from Ian M. Um, you get, like, imagine yeah, the fates yeah. you get on the stacks. <laughs> Ian M, I'm not going to lie, I'm crying. This is hilarious. <laughs> Looking like a fool with your inseam under 50 inches. Yeah, <laughs> all these short people with less than 50 inch inseams. I mean, come on. Gr gr grow some legs, guys. Um, uh, Steven uh, Copal Cam writes only 100 inches. I'm looking forward to those emails. Um, <laughs> Short King who thinks five foot nine is tall guy. Yes, uh, you know, we just uh, it's, it's all these people sending me emails. I think they're just bragging, but you know what? We're gonna see if they put their money where their mouth is and buy buy into the only jeans on the planet that is designed to fit everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone, um, I'd hem them to thirties just to go, uh, just uh, I I'd, I'd just hem them to thirty and go for arm warmers with the leftovers. Uh, you might be a long arms king, mm -hmm. yeah, see, like a I slender see. man yeah, type yeah. of situation. Uh, that's it. Um, uh, <laughs> a spaghetti tree denim from Sensei uh, Madib, uh, Mike Knight. What? What up, pants peeps, hanging out on my day off in sweatpants and my chambray kimono. Well, what's up is the long, long guy mm -hmm. coming out this Monday. Anyway, we'll have uh, a little video and some photos and a, a, a purchasable link. You will be able to order these on Monday. We'll see how many of you are actually going to. Yeah. Go through with it. Kenny Ingram writes, what's the MSRP? I'm going to say that it's it's going to be pricier, but it won't be in ridiculous land. Like, it's not going to be $1,000. All right. Yeah. Well, they, that's, a, that's a deal. Yeah. For those curious... I mean, yeah, because yeah. it's like, wait, like 34, so it's yeah. like three times the length, yeah. right? Well, so it's just like, it's basically, it's not it's totally amazing. three times the fabric, but it's right. almost there. So construction cost is essentially the same yeah it's just like, the material cost yeah. is a little bit higher yeah yeah so it won't be it and won't also be... it's gonna be pre-order so it's not gonna be like the most efficient yeah so we're, we're gonna lose a little bit on the efficiency yeah. but it won't it won't be crazy it'll if be, anybody buys yeah. it yeah it'll be for those people who want a, a crazy souvenir yeah. This is the time uh, yeah. to do it. I also once wanted to make like an 80, as like a size 80 jean. Mm -hmm. Like I just wanted to make something human, like a King Kong size jean. Um, just to have as like a, something you could hang in the store. Yeah. Yeah. But we, we never, uh, you know what, I, I'm going to email, uh, say yeah, we can do Yeah, I mean like that. we've all seen that like, you know, big old yeah. Levi's. It just looks the so cool old to have. promo hang. items they'd yeah. have in those stores. So, um uh, yeah, there's going to be some people asking for a long, long, strong guy. Uh, I think they're just bragging at that point. Um, uh, Pedro writes, $400? Maybe in that realm. Maybe in that realm. So I'll have final pricing on Monday. Um, uh, Andrew, for a salary, not sure if we're being trolled or they're actually going to make it. No, I'm going to troll We're you. actually going to make it. We're actually going to make it. They're coming. Um... Uh, Chris, Lauren, are the long, long guys wide leg or tapered? They're going to be in the true guy fit, so straight, straight leg. leg. Um, uh, uh, Cathedral Ring, can you imagine cuffing those? It would look like flotation devices on your legs. You'll be able to cuff them all the way up to your crotch and still have room for a double cuff. If you're short. I don't if you're, think if you're, that's if you're possible, though. If you're short, like, you know. But I don't think it's possible. Would it be possible? Yeah. 
I don't know. It's just gonna. Like I feel like it, it all there's the way. not enough room. Well, yeah, you'd flip it up. You could probably do it like you could probably flip it all the way up to like your thigh, and then another all the way up to your knee. No, because the leg opening is not gonna be as wide as the thigh. Hmm. Yeah, we'll we'll you see. Know? We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, infinity cuff. Um, Spencer's mustache, Tokyo turn up. Uh, it's this Tokyo Sky Tree turn up is what these are. <laughs> Uh, so there you have it, guys. A little preview for all of you. And if you like the previews, you like getting the insider knowledge, you know what you need to do right now? Like that That's video. It. Like, like this video. Like this video. Listen to Risa. It has served me well, and it'll always like it. serve you well if you just listen to Risa. Well, it just, you know, it motivates us to share more information on these uh on these live streams that's it so hit that like button subscribe if you haven't done so already uh which is now's a great time to subscribe and it's a great time to like so don't just hit the like in the chat hit the actual like button on this video it helps with the engagement and uh you know mm. does all the youtube magic to make more people aware of all the good fine work we do here at naked and famous denim all right. Um, Jameson Keating writes, is there a tentative release date for the Shinigami Selvage? Mm, no, no I'm going to say it's going to be a later fall release. Yeah. So not like a sep not like an August, September, more like an October, November uh, type of deal there. So uh, Closer to spooky season. Yes, that's it. Um, what is your, uh, Kenny Ingram, what is your favorite gene coming out this summer? Um, I liked, I like, liked, like the uh, Undyed Frankenstein. I'm a big, big fan of that one. Uh, the Craftsman Selvage Craftsman, coming up. That, that one's a very, yeah. very nice one. The Ocean's Edge also. That one uh, is a very handsome gene as well. Yeah. Um, so. Craftsman is, is The is Craftsman a Zip Jacket. I, I'm very mm. much looking for. I have, I have the sample. Um, that is going to be a very uh, enjoyable jacket to own, I think. Um, okay. Um, uh, Thomas writes, is it bad? I'm already waiting for fall, winter. I need a new heavy pair. It's not bad. That's why we tune into these live streams so yeah. that you guys know what's coming up. And speaking of what's coming up, like we'll probably release the fall, winter video Mm, probably late June, early July. Probably July. Yeah, probably but, July. But also, like, you know, heavier weight. You know, we just released Matcha, which is 15. We're going to have the... We're going to have the MIJ 12, which is 16 ounce. Um, yeah. Sometime in, uh, before the fall season starts. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of options. Yeah. Uh, two good questions. Over flight writes, will Forever Blue ever return? People keep mocking my cell phone fades. Well, to those people mocking your cell phone fades, tell them to kick rocks, okay? And, and, and why they, why they, why they so fixated on your cell phone fade mock, area? Mock their fake, uh, Yeah, fake, mark uh, their fake fades. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, Forever Blue is coming back in fall yeah in this fall this fall so coming oh, fall winter yeah. 24 we've got a new edition of the forever blue selvage coming up so yeah we uh we know it's coming we know it's coming because we designed it and now you know it's coming because we're telling you um giovanni writes i noticed charcoal easy guys that made a reappearance on tate and yoko inventory will there be more gray releases anytime Soon. So that easy guy charcoal was also like a random find, and it was like it was that one was like years and years old. Yeah. So which is funny, but um, we didn't even have a product on the website. Yeah, it any, was oh, um, any longer. Maxim was doing some good work, uh, hunting down. He's the denim hunter. Opening in, all the boxes. Uh, yeah. And finding, finding all the treasure. Mystery. I'm sure he found some not treasures too. The, the other thing is, is that sometimes you don't realize if something isn't on the website. You know, you like you might go in the back and you'll see because sometimes you you've seen 
that inventory is there and you'll see it and like you, you know sometimes there's just so many products on the website that you, it doesn't make the you don't often make the connection where oh there's a box of denim jackets here it just looks like all the other inventory that's, that's here true. and then you're like you didn't realize that it wasn't actually yeah. on the website it takes them the guys to like notice that oh i we haven't shipped this in so long it must yeah. not be online and then they'll check and then they'll let us know so it's it's it takes a little bit of a, a, a teamwork here mm -hmm. Um, yeah, what were we saying? Oh, is there uh, any more? I mean, I, mean I, I would imagine there will be some things here and there. We'll continue to find things, I'm sure. Yeah, but, uh, but will, are there any more gray jeans in the future? I can I can see that, you know, we, it's, we've, we've... Oh, we have, yeah, we have gray jeans coming. Which ones? Uh, Meteor Self. Oh, that's right, that's right. Uh... The Meteor Selvage is returning for the fall. Yeah, that's so right. That's a gray yeah. jean. Uh, but like a dark gray, like the charcoal, mm, I could see it coming again at some point. The closest thing right now is probably the ash black. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah. Yeah. We're, like we're not against it. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, what, when we see there's kind of a hole in the market for it, we'll, we'll probably uh, do that again. Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 you know, da, da. it's surprising that the long, long guy only got us to 51 likes. That's it. All right, I guess you guys didn't like the mm. long, long guy after all. Maybe we'll just cancel it. Mm. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Uh, we won't. I, it'll still come. <laughs> Even if you don't like this video, which you shouldn't not like the video, you should only hit the thumbs up. Uh, if you're a thumbs downer, Wow, what a downer you are. You know, the other day, um, sometimes I will engage with, like, you know, sometimes people casually, like, throw insults in the uh, in the chat. Not in the chat, but in, like, in the comment sections. Like what? Uh, I don't want to repeat them, but, oh. you know, just, you know, they're, they can be a little nasty sometimes. Uh, you know, whatever op opinions they have of, you know, me or you or any of our, less <laughs> you, but, you know, mostly... They, well, it's the internet. Yeah, it's the internet. Yeah. And like sometimes I'll engage them and I'll just you know, like, I'll, I'll try to throw like a haha, -ha, like, you know, funny joke, mm. you know. Uh, and then sometimes people go like way too far with it. And then like, it, the, like they'll throw the insult and then you'll be like haha. -ha, and then they'll like be like, oh no, I actually really mean this. And, you know, by, by, by tripling or quadrupling down on their vitriol. And you're just like, huh, this person is insane. <laughs> Delete, block, you're out of here. Yeah, like, sometimes uh, it does scare me though, because like we're not really like, you know, we're not set up for that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kinda, like everybody knows, like especially Tatiana. Oh, we got a new subscriber. There we go, Alex. You made the right choice today by subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much. But like you uh, know, everybody knows where like our office is. Yeah, and, I mean, yeah. I don't think anyone's gonna go crazy. No, I know, but yeah. it's just like no. Yeah, but my my point is like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I I can understand criticism. Something like you know, somebody was like, oh, you know, why, you know, don't you make a gene like this for this season or you know, whatever, right? Oh, I don't like this gene because of X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Fine, that's not a problem. But like. You know, you watch a video and you're like, wow, that person looks like a this or, you know, whatever the insult is. You know, I don't I don't want to repeat these things. Mm. And I'm just like, wh why did you feel the need to type that? Yeah. Right. It's like, yeah. you know, what? like you could feel it on the inside and maybe you do feel it on the inside. But for you to be like, here's my here's my picture. Here's my profile. And here's, you know, whatever. And like, I think you look like a insult or you are a this uh and i'm just like why yeah like not only yeah. that that thought popped in yeah. your mind yeah. uncontrollably that yeah. happens to all of yeah. us you know we all have some negative sides to us but like just deciding to type it and on top of that posting it yeah it's like three steps of consideration and yeah. it's like you, you just had to do it yeah yeah, right. it is weird because, like, you know, I mean, like, when you watch something, it's like sometimes you're like, what? wow, this guy looks like a, you know, a, you know, like, wow, that guy's outfit, you know, whatever. You will, you will have this feeling in your head. But obviously, you like, for you to broadcast it, like, to the world. And, 
you know, it's like, I guess you can always, you know, delete a comment, yeah, but yeah. like, you know, you just put it out there that anybody can see. It's, it's a special kind of, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Right. It, it, it's hard to understand those people. Mm. So anyhow, uh, if you do have a nasty comment, just keep it to yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't need to see it. Yeah. And like, but to be fair, it's if I'm like, engaging with you, I'm trying to make it like a, I can take a joke. We can all take a joke. But, mm -hmm. you know, w once it crosses a line, it's like, oh, no. That's, you know, it's just, it's just not appropriate. Anyhow, I, I don't, yeah. I, it's not appropriate. But it's, it's uh, not so common, though. Like, think, like. You know, there are certain spaces on the internet that are so mean, like, or certain, like, right. oh, yeah. you know, certain yeah, yeah, videos, yeah, yeah. like, yeah. of certain people get so much hate. Yeah. It's like, our community is yeah, not yeah. like well, that. Yeah, to be all. fair, it's, ve it's very small, very, yeah. very, very, very... I feel like we're just yeah. kind of... I don't have to police like, much, right? Yeah. Because we do have the greatest gr group of people uh, in our realm. Um, and I feel like yeah. I, I'm pretty sure like most of people here are yeah. sometimes like, oh, what did, what did you say? But, yeah. you know, they're not going to like. Right. You know, uh, you know uh, Stephen uh, Copel Cam writes, constructive criticism equals good. Criticism, criticism for criticism's sake equals bad. I'm going to even say criticism, criticism for criticism's sake. Some people just want to be a critic. But it, to, it's like when it goes beyond criticism, like. When it's just like personal insults or like comments about how somebody looks or you know acts or whatever, like th that's not criticism. That's like you wouldn't say that to my face, right? You just wouldn't. I know you wouldn't, right? Mm -hmm. And if you would, you might like I'm, I'm not like I'm not a violent person. I'm not gonna you know do anything. But like it's just odd that you feel like. You maybe even in your daily life, you walk down the street, you see people wearing crazy fashion or acting a certain way. You might think to yourself, oh, that person looks dumb or, you know, that person's acting like a fool. You would never walk up to them and say, hey, this, that, and the other thing. You just wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But on the internet, somehow you feel like, hey, I now have this, I guess, you know, the, the chances of you getting punched in the mouth are zero. So you feel like you're brave. But... I guess that's what stops you from doing that in reality. Mm -hmm. Even though most people would probably just brush you off, like you know, like I'm, I'm not going to get in a fight over words. That's pretty, it's pretty stupid. But uh, yeah, I just I, I never understand that. Like I wouldn't write something n like negative about a person. Criticism yeah. is criticism, even if it's just someone's just being a, a critical jerk. Like that happens all the time, right? Mm -hmm. They could be wrong about it. They could be right about it. But, like, that, that, we're leaving the conversation in, like, the realm of, like, the topic that we're talking about. But, like, you know, just to throw insults, I don't know. Uh, nonsense. Nonsense. Mm. Uh, so, if, if that's you, you're still welcome here. But just lighten up, you know. Yeah, it, it, maybe it, they it, had a bad yeah, day. Maybe you had a bad day. Right. Um, all right. Uh, Mike Drop 37, Naked and Famous Degrassi collab coming soon? <sighs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, yeah. yeah, I can't, like, I can't cross all of my... Uh... But also, you can't collab with, because, because, like, Degrassi, like, old Degrassi <laughs> yeah, is yeah. what you like. Yeah, you definitely. And yeah. You cannot collab with the current, well, is it still going on? Probably oh, yeah, not. definitely. I, oh. I think is it... it is. Like you can't yeah. like, and they're not gonna call up with like the yeah. the eighties yeah. grassy. It's not. It's, or it's, 90s. it's just not. Uh, you know, it's just not for. Uh, yes, I don't think that's a that's a clear collab right there. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, what do we got here? Um, uh, Cathedral Ring wrote, "LOL, what did they say? Not Japanese enough." No, that wasn't it. That was a funny comment somebody wrote about us once. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. I mean... They were just making a weird, like, why would you, just like a weird criticism of like, I don't, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was like, you know, this is a, why would you buy Japanese denim from a Canadian oh, yeah, company yeah, yeah. and blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. And I'm like, 
Okay, like how how much more Japanese do we need to like? If that's your criticism, like just say like that is just openly your criticism. Like, why would you buy, you know, Japanese denim from a Canadian company instead of buying it from a Japanese company? I'm like, okay. So if if your point is that we're not Japanese enough in that respect, okay, us living here, you, you've been Japanese your whole life. Probably for a so. couple. How many? How many generations do you think that goes back? I, I don't know. All of I them, only maybe. Know, like three generations. Okay, <laughs> maybe all the way back to you know <laughs> the Cretaceous period. Yeah. Um, and it's just like we operate half out of here. Facilities in Canada. I'm like, is is where's the cutoff? But it's right? even, but, but, even like but, uh, before that, yeah. like what kind of a criticism yeah. is that? Right, like right. you are not buying things because it's Japanese. Yeah. I don't think so. I think you're buying, you know, obviously you have a certain level of trust in the quality yeah. or, you know, things that are how things are made. You know, you know, how things are made in Japan and that's why yeah. you're probably buying them. But like, you know, we're very open about the fact that the fabrics are made in Japan. We, you know, we create design fabrics and, you know, have, you know, work with the Japanese mills to create fabric so like there's no difference there and then you know if you're talking about like oh this you know jeans needs to be like sewn in japan we're not lying to you about sewing in canada we're proud to be sewing in canada yeah. so it's like I, I don't understand yeah. like if we don't want yeah. that then don't, don't right. yeah but it's just again it just boils down to like an odd like to me it just felt like that's a specific criticism designed to criticize us and where it's like it's even in that respect, it's incorrect because of you know where we are geographically located. Um, so, like, does that same criticism apply to everything? Like, why would you buy a phone that is designed in America and made in China instead of a instead of a, a Chinese made company phone made in China? Like, you know, it just like that 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 mentality doesn't apply across the board. So it's just such a you know to me a foolish. Uh, uh, you know, critique. It's like, again, if you want to just say you don't like our products, yeah, they're exactly. not for you. Then just say that. You don't have to like oddly justify it. Like, it, yeah, that, that's that's just my point there. Um, so, if you don't like us. You don't like me. You don't like what we do. Fine, that's okay. We're not like a you like if you like heritage stuff or you like things done a certain way. That's just your preference, and that's fine. And even right? within like our you know naked and famous the, the, you know products, so there's so much variety that yeah. I don't think you can like hate like yeah. the entire brand. If you hate the brand, I think you just hate hate us, and that, yeah. that's about it. Yeah. It's like if you're like you know looking at each product there's so much variety we even have things made in japan too so yeah. it's like you can't yeah. possibly yeah. be basing yeah. off of yeah. you know our products yeah. yeah it's okay it's uh you know the, the the whenever there's a little success there's gonna be pushback and that's fine you know we can we can take the heat um doesn't you know just comes with the territory i guess and uh it's better than not being known that's right, true. you know, like if there's an op if someone has an opinion about you, then you're worth having an opinion on because there's a lot of products and brands out there that you've never seen and you've never heard of, and that's, you know, and they might be perfectly good products, but they're they're just not making the noise um, that's necessary to you know be be, be known. So, anyhow, it's uh, haters gonna hate. haters gonna hate hate it. That's Taylor Swift wrote a song about it, that. She knows. Yeah, she knows. Taylor Swift knows. Um, uh, Jameson Keating could still have the Naked and Famous graphic, but with denim in Braille. Hmm. What's a Braille? Like, you know, for uh, blind people, they have the raised uh, uh -huh. bumps. Uh -huh. That could be kind of a cool idea for, like, the leather patch. What do you think, Snowy? Should we do a Braille... Like, you know, Naked and Famous Denim, but the text is in Braille. It could be, it could be kind of neat. I don't know. I, like, I think it would have to tie in with some kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of a good idea, like, to have, like, a Braille version of your logo. I don't know. Is there, a, is there like, 
I don't know anything about Braille, but is there, for example, like fonts or cursives in Braille? No, it's just dots, no? Because if the I, dot I, placement changes, then it's... it's yeah, it's you different. Can't read it. But I, sometimes you can be very expressive in the way your font and, you know, the, that it, it's not, sometimes not just the word, but mm-hmm. how it's, the word is presented. So how does that type of uh, emotion get conveyed in Braille, I wonder? I don't know anything about Braille. And also, Braille's are like alphabets, right? Like, I don't know if there's different... Like, is it the same language? Like, I know American Sign Language is American Sign Language, but I don't know if other languages use the same signs as Amer... Like, there's got to be other languages in sign language also. Of course, yes. Yeah, that's... that's, Like, Japanese sign language is Mm. Japanese. It's not like it's English words using like if you're like uh, but there's got to be common signs like oh i'm sure there are common signs yeah yeah, but but it's it's a japanese language like Mm. if you change the language you cannot like it's not a word for word translation nothing is Mm. so yeah my elementary school was half deaf Mm. and hearing actually was there were more deaf students than uh, hearing students, so we had to learn a certain amount of sign language. I'm not good at it anymore. Were you yeah. like taking classes in the same class? Some or? we would share some classes. It was very like that side of the school was uh, the deaf kids, and then this side of the school was the hearing kids. But um, sometimes we would have like obviously we would interact with each other, but uh, yeah, we we didn't have. We didn't share a lot of classes together, but we would sometimes share like you know certain activities, and uh, there would be some crossover classes so we would get to um, you know interact with one another. Um, but we we all learned a little bit of sign language, uh, but yeah, I don't remember it all. Mm. Mm. I remember one time because sometimes you get those scammers who go around. I'm sure the scam is kind of popular everywhere, but. Uh, th- you would get people who would pretend to have a disability. And in this case, the, like people would go around the malls in Ontario and they would fake being deaf. And like you would sit at the food court and what they would do is they would put a pen with a little pamphlet with like, uh, you know, some easy signs that you mm-hmm. could learn. And then they would go around and they would just put it on your table and then they would, they would ask for donations. And, uh, uh, like, it would kind of be very, like, very unsolicited. Mm. And I remember once, like, I was kind of skeptical of this one guy who who was always in the mall doing it, because I used to work in the mall. And uh, he, he, he dropped it, and then I signed to him, like, that I was good. Like, I didn't need it. And then he started signing back to me, and I'm like, you are not bullshitting. Mm. You are not a bullsh. You are not a bullshitter. One of, I mean, you know, this is just his way of making income. But uh, he wasn't a bullshitter, or at least he could at least sign. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, and and I gave him some money because uh, I was like, I've seen bullshitters who couldn't uh, respond. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, sir, did. Yeah. But so signing is like words, right? You're not, sometimes there's words you and spell, letters. Yeah. yeah things, yeah. but like mostly it's words. Like I, I think. It's is the the braille. Yeah. Call it? Is is I th- is that more like text based? I would think so, right? I I think I guess it's letters. Yeah. Mm. That's man. That's a. It's a, yeah. it's a lot. It's a lot. Hmm. D- very difficult. Mm. Um. Uh. Cathedral ring rights. My brother is actually deaf, and I can fake my way through any food court on earth. <laughs> 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 well. Uh, I'm sure you yeah, want yeah, yeah, yeah. fake it yeah. <laughs> to get money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, 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 Jameson Keating, sign language is different in different countries uh, and continents. There are at least two kinds of sign language in the United States, but the more widely used one is ASL or American oh, sign, language. sign Language. Yeah, interesting. interesting. I guess yeah. different, you know, sometimes you use different words in different regions. Mm. Maybe that's yeah. something like that. I wonder. And I wonder if all the new slang gets new, 
Like, there's got to be. Uh, you know, like, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. I was on a live stream with Vince and, and uh, Garrett, and they were teaching me the word riz. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what riz is. <laughs> <laughs> like, so there's always these new slang yeah, terms. Yeah. So there's sure got to be some yeah. uh, interesting, you know, new uh, uh, signs for slang yeah. words. But also, yeah. like, when there was a new word amongst, you know, young people, like, yeah. you have to come up with the yeah. time for yeah. it. <laughs> so that would be kind of neat to, like, follow and learn how that all works. Mm. Um uh, uh, Cathedral Ring writes, this is true. They do, in fact, have slang and mostly on names. They create uh, variations on the letter, etc. Hmm. Well, there you go. Uh, we're learning a lot today, aren't we? Um, um, uh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, maybe. Maybe one day we'll do some kind of Braille version of the logo. That could be kind of interesting. Anyway, it, it would have to be the right idea something mm -hmm. coming together mm -hmm. um to make that happen uh bd wrote denim jean patch coming when i could see that you, you know i even thought about you that. know what would be cool because the way to do it is by lasering the logo in to the denim and then you make a denim patch yeah. so if you guys have never seen it you know a, the modern way for distressing denim is with lasers so they have these these giant machines, and you clip the you. Well, I've seen it two ways. So usually they'll, they'll have a table where you lie the jean down flat, and then like this powerful laser like beams down and like burns the fabric and burns like the you know fade uh, into the jean. And they'll do it on a couple different passes depending on like how faded you know particular area needs to be. And then the other way is to like they have like this hanging device, and you like. You put the jean on like the, these legs, and then you put it up, and then uh, the laser will burn it on the front, and then it spins around on the back, and then the laser burns it on the back, and then once it's done, you know the guy will pull it off the machine, and like they'll usually have, I guess depending on the factory, like you know dozens or even hundreds of these machines going at the same time. So you'll have a couple of people just like walking up and down the aisles, like pull, you know taking off the finished jean, putting a new one on. But you can use that same technology to basically burn anything into denim. So that way you can, we can get a clean looking patch. Yeah, um, and you you can get really detailed. It's it's I mean it's like prints yeah. almost. So yeah, and I'm I'm sure you've seen like not just like you know fade patterns, but like there's actual like you know floral patterns or yeah. whatever that that you can um you can basically print. Come on, laser. No wait. Okay. No no no. <laughs> For you. Um. All right. So yeah, that's. A little bit about lasering and our off, our on-topic topic about uh, Braille. Um, uh, James C. Kidding writes, "How nuts would a laser core gene be? LOL. You spend all this time fading your genes, and when the indigo finally fades away, it reveals some sort of BS lasered on fake fades." How would that work? You'd have mm, so so. Say for example, you took you lasered on a pattern like a fade pattern mm -hmm. and then you over dyed you'd have to over dye the garment mm -hmm. so the problem with like garment dyeing something is that it tends to penetrate like you can't really control the penetration so if you want it to be dark enough to cover anything that is already like pre-faded you'd have to like soak it in that dye long enough and then it would kind of fill in everything mm -hmm. um so i don't think it works and it wouldn't and it wouldn't fade like if you coated it with like a like a paint coating on top yeah then that could crack off and eventually reveal the faded gene underneath <laughs> snowy's really uh he really wants to be on camera today um so yeah i'm like like Risa said i don't know if that would work work i don't think it works um but it is kind of funny if you, if, it, is, if, it is a thought yeah, experiment. Yeah. Um, there we go. So now we just sit on our lap. There you go. Um, uh, laser fade the stacks on the long, long guy. I don't think there's a laser powerful enough to 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 to, to burn in all the fades necessary on the long, long guy. Um, 
Philippe Jackson writes, how do you recommend we store our jeans? Um, well, if you're anything like me, they're on the floor next to your bed. And that seems to do the job for me. But um, just fold them. It's, fold them, hang them, yeah. however you want. Yeah, it's uh, just a stack of jeans. Folded is a stack of jeans folded. There's like stack folding your jeans isn't going to ruin the fades or anything like that. I would just say like maybe unlike this. To be fair, that pile changes up often. Like if you have your stack of jeans next to a sunny window and you're going to have it there for months and months and months and months on end with direct sunlight, probably not the greatest way to stack to store your jeans or any of your clothes for that matter. But uh whether you hang them up or fold them nothing's gonna harm them if you're worried about like you know you've worn your jeans for months and months on end and they haven't been washed well maybe airing them out is probably a good idea um you know let them air let them hang out in the sun you know every now and then just to let the sun do its magic on the jeans and uh you know yeah, go out in the yeah. sun and jeans also. yeah that works but uh yeah if you if you stack up a pile of stinky jeans you're just going to end up with a stack of stinky jeans but it's other than the stink it's not going to hurt or harm the jeans in any way so i think some people really overthink how to store their jeans um you know do i hang them do i have a rack do i have this look maybe if you want to, like, aesthetically, if you want to have your jeans, you know, uh, uh, displayed nicely, of course, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, but I think sometimes people really overthink the how do I store my jeans question. Mm. Um, hang, fold, leave them on a pile somewhere. It's all okay. They they, they can handle them. Mm -hmm. um, uh uh, Nayumi writes, any examples of matcha salvage fades from employees yet? Very excited to see how they turn out. Not no, yet. No, because we didn't have the correct sample. So anything that ended up being a, a production level the fabric, it's just brand new. They just came in. So. Yeah. It'll, it'll probably be a few months before we see any mm. fade progress on I, that. Terry told me that his wife is wearing a matcha. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, so well, she, she just, she she just wanted felt. to wear it. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, we'll see what happens there. That's it. Uh, Kenny Ingram, my naked and famous jeans are folded in thirds like you guys do it, either beside my bed, in a dresser, or in a Rubbermaid bin in the crawl space, depending on which ones you're talking about. Well, there you go. Uh, I have a box, a whole box of jeans folded in my office in Montreal. There's just a giant box of all my old jeans. Not all, just a bunch of them. There's also several boxes of jeans in my mom's storage basement. Mm -hmm. There's, a, there's from my, my days at Diesel, there's a lot of jeans my my i diesel and, and and working at uh i used to work at a department store in the in the denim department so i i acquired a lot of jeans over the years uh those are all sitting there as well um next time we go there we just film you bring up all this old, old that'd be cool jeans. yeah it's like he, you're definitely gonna be like oh man how look how skinny I yeah was. dude i was so skinny i have this one pair of i have to find them because i felt so cool when i bought these jeans i gotta see if i can look them up it was a brand called and i'm sure they're still around um but it was a brand called jay Lindbergh. Hmm. um and nowadays um I think they're mostly known for golf wear. Um, a huge for a while. Yeah, but the designer, if I remember correctly, he used to design for Diesel, Jay Lindbergh. Uh, he used to design for Diesel, and then he left, started his own brand, and it was more like a fashion lifestyle brand, like a Diesel. And then I remember, because we used to carry it at the store, um, and uh, 
And then all of a sudden we started getting golf wear from them. And I, I thought it was a weird, like, how does these two things mix? And we really had a very, like, different customer base for them because, like, for the denim and, like, the, like, you know, graphic tee part of the brand, like, you know, distressed sweaters and that kind of stuff, you know, you'd kind of, we get a lot of club kids coming in for that. And then, uh, and then you get like these older business type guys coming in for like the baseball caps and the, you know, the, uh, the golf wear stuff. Uh, but everybody for a long time, if you're in Toronto, that JL, J Lindeberg belt, every 20 to 35 year old guy in the city had that belt. It was ridiculous how many of those belts we sold. Um, I got to find this belt. Uh, but I had these patchwork flared jeans from them and I absolutely loved them. Uh, they were, they were, they were crazy. And, uh, yeah, at, at some point I'll, I'll dig them up. It was a very, very, like maybe not something I would wear today, but when I was a, a young little fashionista, I, I was a big fan of that belt. But yeah, this are those jeans. But this belt, everybody in Toronto had this belt. I'm sure it was, you know, maybe even in other regions. But if you were in Toronto in the mid 2000s, every guy wore this belt with their diesel jeans. Uh, and then this belt came out. But this was the one they must have sold a hundred million of these belts. Uh, I definitely contributed to the selling of that belt. I I, I even owned that belt. Uh, and then when, when it got, in my opinion, played out, I was like, nah, I can't wear this belt anymore. And uh, I even had this belt. Um, but big buckle belts or graphic belts were so were so popular at that time. Uh, and yeah. It's you, just like, a, what, I mean, is there something like that where everybody has it now? I feel like Canada Goose was it for Canada a while. Canada Goose jackets. Gucci like, pouches were uh, that Gucci, mm -hmm. like... You know which one I'm talking about? In Toronto, again, every club guy, it was the club guys. Every one of those guys had that. Mm -hmm. If Yeah. Yeah. I, like, for women, there was, like, a while, everybody had those Tory Burch uh, flats. Oh, right. Oh, so yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. like, everybody had it. Yeah. It was so weird. Everybody was representing these brands. Or, oh, like, Michael Kors, I guess, like, mm. is, is, I think it's still very popular. Right. Yeah, but there was just certain tropes that went around. Yeah, and it, it's like, it's so recognizable. Like, the yeah. branding is just so yeah. in your face. And that's how you capture all these people. Because yeah. all these people are not buying this for, for the, 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 the fit or right. like whatever. Yeah. It was like True Religion jeans or Rock and Republic jeans, Affliction or Ed Hardy t-shirt, mm -hmm. and a Gucci pouch. That was the look. It was the Jersey Shore it was a big yeah. look for a lot of guys. I did not rock that look. Um, but, but what is the equivalent now? I don't know what the equivalent of that is now. I, I, I find that things have very much diversified. In, in Back in that time, like if it was trendy, the trend really stuck and it went like far and wide. Whereas here, nowadays, you, you have pockets of trends. And uh, it's it's not so much one thing anymore. Mm -hmm. And like Will Chan writes, that was a very douchey look, definitely. But like that guy today, you know, like even you know, mm, like a high fashion brand, like a like a Rick Owens. Like I remember when it when it hit, when we got it when we were carrying it at Holt Renfrew, we actually had a hard time selling it because they're like, the guys were still wearing a lot of like, you know, Dolce Gabbana, Diesel, like that's what you wore, right? Mm -hmm. That's what like rich, cool guys wore. They weren't like in the avant-garde world now, but now I find like, in my mind, like I picture it's like the same guy who would have been wearing, wearing like that kind of stuff. They're wearing Rick Owens now. And I, Hmm. And like Rick Owens has a wide audience for sure, but like, but it's also not like, like some, everybody though, is it? It's a lot of people now, hmm. and like now it doesn't it doesn't like you know it doesn't feel like it's just emo kids you know high fashion emo kids wearing it. It feels like no, actually this 
like they might have that emo look, but it 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 appeals like more people are wearing it. Like, it's not mm-hmm. so much a uniform anymore. Right. Yeah. Kenny Ingram says the, um, the essentials, fear of God and essentials. Yeah. That, that is true. Like, that's, oh, yeah. that's very pretty popular. equivalent. It's so, it's so not, like, you know, it doesn't stand out, but the logo is yeah. definitely everywhere. Mm, that's true. Sure. Yeah. Luis Mendoza, Gen Z trying to bring back Ed Hardy. I saw five of them at the mall last week. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Think- Ed Hardy's an like the the thing like for me it's not like I don't want to wear and even when it came out like maybe when it came out I was turned off by like the audience mm. right I wasn't like the the bro we I wasn't a bro kind of guy. The thing about Ed Hardy is that it's hard to not appreciate the tattoo design, right? It's like the, the the actual graphics themselves as tattoos and like the history of all that is beautiful. I think it's amazing. Yeah, um, it's the same yeah. same room as like the Scott and you know yeah, like yeah, that yeah. kind of vibe where like it is it is good art. It's just that yeah, people who are representing the brand yeah. it was just a little bit yeah. Um, not main, main, I, yeah. I guess not mainstream. I mean, it yeah. is mainstream, right? It was mainstream, but uh, it was it, it had certain connotations. connotations yeah. But also, they did that because they yeah. they blinked it all up mm, and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. I mean, so it, yeah. they brought themselves. Mike Drop thirty seven. Oh man, Jersey Shore was quality trash TV. I remember <laughs> walking into class every Thursday and yelling out to my friend, "It's Jersey Day." <laughs> Jersey Shore certainly had a big impact on the culture. And you know what I have to say? Like, I certainly watched that. I think everybody watched that show. I didn't when watch it, it in real time. Oh, I see. I knew yeah. about it, yeah. but I didn't yeah. know. I didn't yeah. watch, watch that, it. That was maybe like the last era, like that and like The Hills and like those kind mm-hmm. of shows. Of like when I else. paid attention to TV. I I've, Since then, I have no idea mm. what's going on on TV. But... That was also, I feel like, the last era where everybody was watching, was watching TV. Oh, no, there was, like, the beginning of Netflix original, like, mm. the, the you know, content where, like, everybody was watching, you know, like, a certain documentary or something like yeah. that. Yeah, right. So, uh, yeah, that was a big, big impact on mm. the culture, the way people dressed, like... People really embraced that look. They were like, "Yo, uh, this is this is me. I'm going for it." And like, yeah, I mean, you see it on TV. And I have to say that, you know, you watch that show and you're like, "Wow, you know, whatever your opinions of these people might have been." Like, I've seen like later, like more recent ones. Like, I've, I've you know, yeah, we watched the the grown up. Yeah, and I'm like, they most of them grew up to be like regular n- people. normal people, and yeah, it's, it's very have, refreshing to like. Yeah, they have the, like, you know, they're not. They're real people yeah. with, like, real, you know, uh, compassion and yeah. stuff. It's so, just... so I'm, I'm glad to see, you know, like, uh, the, 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 the progression uh, and, and, and the many positive things that uh, they've, they've, they've brought to their lives. Yeah. Um, Louis Mendoza, Wu-Tang collab possibility. We have to celebrate 50 years of hip-hop. I think it could be cool. I'd have to reach out to the good people at Wu Tang, <laughs> the Wu Tang Corporation, if we did a Wu Wear collaboration. When I was a kid, and mind you, it was mostly the bullies that beat me up. They would, I, I don't know what it was, but I would always associate Wu Wear with the people who would like <laughs> jump me after school. <laughs> but um, it, anyhow, I th- just the amount of woo wear that was around when I was in uh you know growing up uh it was a big brand and I think it could be kind of cool to do a woo wear collaboration um that, that 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 would spark my interest for sure um uh uh Mr. Pucci Lucci writes the raver slash Ed Hardy look has definitely come back recently but i feel yeah. like they're doing it ironically maybe like i don't get that like you know i'm living this life mm. vibe from those people right that's true they're not like fist pumping in the air you know <laughs> no. the ravers i don't know i don't know what's going on in the rave scene these days but i remember again when i was a kid raving was like this secretive uh yeah i remember 
you know, getting tickets to raves and it was like, yeah, you can buy the ticket, but we're not telling you where the rave is until like an hour before the, it starts. And you got to call the phone number and we'll tell you where it is. And it's like, whoa, this is, this is, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Mike Chop also, uh, Mike Chop writes, also Wu-Tang wore Clark's Wallabies, so you should do a Clark's Times Naked and Famous Denim Wallaby. Um, maybe, we'll see. That I, I like the idea of doing like a... Music. Well, for me, it's like a hip hop inspired raw denim collection because what a lot of people don't realize or like they don't associate it very commonly is that like like 80s and 90s hip hop, there was a lot of raw denim. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of raw denim. Their outfits, they wore a lot of denim outfits and it was, it was, I would not say exclusively raw, but a lot of it was raw. And now they didn't wear it in the sense that like, oh, I'm wearing I'm it. Like, it. Yeah, like, I'm like, or like, you know, I'm trying to be a cowboy or something. Yeah. They had it their own style, baggy, loose, like yeah. big chore coats, uh, you know, Carhartt, Dickies, but, but denim, right? Yeah. And so they wore a lot of denim in these outfits. And I find that in like the history of raw denim culture, that whole era really gets skipped on because it's not like, you know, they don't, I, I don't know. I don't know why people skip on it. You know, maybe it's because we're so into fading and we like to think of like vintage worn faded jeans as like, that's how we have to look at um, denim as a whole. But, you know, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. And the, the, the hip hop era that I'm sure many of us grew up in I don't know about now. I have no idea what the hell is going on now. But th those looks were so like, you know, to me they're so iconic. And I, of, you know, we'd have to maybe do it in a little bit of a modern way. But nowadays, even looser fit jeans, like they're not as baggy as they used to be. You know, and we're not wearing them, you know, down past our butts. Um, I'm sure some people are, but that's oh, that's not that's people not. Are. Not the main. That's not the main way. Like in in junior high, I mean, you know, all of us had bag. Like there's that scene from Clueless. That's like such a. That's yeah. how we all dressed. You know, I always thought that it was funny that like the guys in Japan also wore. I don't think it was directly like influenced by that, but it was just like it was a thing for guys to wear pants. You know, pants so low that you see like most of your butt. Yeah. And it's always like the similar kind of guys, but I don't know if it was actually inspired by people who are wearing pants like that. Right. I mean, this is a, I'm going to just pull up the look. I'm not going to pull up the clip, but yeah, this was, this is what we all looked like. Baggy, baggy, baggy. Everything had to be baggy. You couldn't, like, the idea of skinny, if you wore skinny, you wouldn't even be able to find skinny jeans. Like every kid, and then maybe we all didn't dress as colorfully as this, but the idea of wearing jeans that were like close to your body, that that idea did not even exist in our minds at that time. Um, uh, Jameson Keating writes, that picture is one degree removed from TikTok fashion. Uh, yeah, wouldn't surprise me. I mean, you know, we 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 invented it. We uh, we made it happen, and uh, now they're paying tribute to their elders, which they should, and I appreciate that. Anytime I see a young person in an outfit, it makes me feel young in a way. Like I'm like, oh, that's that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> that's cool. You know, I, I I always tell young employees, I'm like, you want to impress your boss? Just tell them you like things that their boss likes. Just if this is a pro anybody who's 23 in the chat right now, and your boss at work or whatever is, you know, a Gen Xer, just tell them how much you like Seinfeld and Friends. But but don't yeah. just say it and never yeah. watch it. No, no, like, no. That's not what? a good yeah. advice. Watch it a little bit. Yeah. Watch it a little bit. Enjoy and be like, it because yeah. those are yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, like, pay attention to those old things <laughs> and then maybe talk about it. Yeah. Don't be like, oh, yeah. yeah, I like those, I like that. And just, and just like, tell them how much it's better than TV today. Because yeah. they're going to come back to you with, like, oh, which part do you like? Or, yeah. you know, whatever, like, the questions. So mm. you can't you can't just be a kiss-ass and just, you know, yeah. not, not 
be into that at all. But kiss, Why? but but be a little bit of a kiss ass. It's gonna it, trust me. That is that that is that is the best career advice I can give you. Is just tell older people how much you like stuff that they like. Yeah, and I'm they not will disagreeing with yeah. that. It's just that you have to have substance yeah. behind yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. They they will love you. They will absolutely love you. Uh, Jameson Keating writes, don't even tell them. Show up to work in a pair of Costanza Nike <laughs> Cortezes and wait for them to notice. That's it. Uh, <laughs> drape yourself yeah, in velvet. Drape yourself in velvet. That's it. So, yeah, it's uh, it's good advice. We're, we're, uh, we're definitely at the age where we think we're the greatest generation. And if you just notice it, even if, you're li- even if you lie... We don't care. Just tell us how great we are, and uh, that's it. We're we're young at heart, but we're old in body, older in body. We're not the same. We're not the same forty year old as uh, as the previous generation. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, Kenny Ingram writes, "I'm a big fan of the Bayzad special." Well, I'm glad. You must be a very very rich person. Um, Stephen Copolcam writes. I remember some guys wearing women's pants when skinny jeans were in their, uh, in their, inf- I guess, in- infantized. So when they were just coming out. I remember when I wanted to wear, like, flared jeans, I had to go to the girls' section to get flared jeans. Um, they yeah. did not have those for guys. I remember when, like... Um, we're working with at Naked and Famous. We're working with like a Indonesian like uh, customer retailer, yeah. and they were like, "Yeah, like your super guys are not skinny enough, and also don't come in small size enough. Like we're gonna yeah. have to buy your women's jeans." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so it just depends. Yeah. Um, Adam Brown writes. I told my boss I liked Call of Duty. He made me play with him in Warzone every night. And get him win. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you, you yeah. got to back it yeah. up with yeah. some more. We were having a similar discussion. Uh, we have, you know, our, our, our weekly meeting with the team. And, uh, I don't know, they were talking about new games. And people were like, uh, I guess they're talking about Warzone. I'm like, dude, the last Call of Duty I played seriously was Modern Warfare 2. Modern Warfare 1 and 2 I played a lot. Like, a lot. A, a, like a ridiculous amount but i'm just like guys just play doom 2 and the debate just don't even worry about modern games doom 2 that's all you need you only need doom well doom 1 doom 2 quake 1 i'm not actually the biggest fan of quake 2 i like quake 3 a lot better unreal tournament that's all you really need uh counter strike although i'm not good at counter strike i suck at counter strike but doom 2 that's all you need um i would love to do a doom collaboration that would also be on the... What would that be? I don't know, but it would be bloody. Um, yeah. It would have to be, like, pixelated. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe, like, a pixelated version of... Uh, you know what? I would have, like, our our Tragic Blonde, like, you know, locked and loaded <laughs> on, the, on the patch um, uh, with just a pile of dead cyber demons in the background. Uh... Yeah, it would. I would love to do Doom. That would be great. That would be up there on the mountaintop of collabs I'd love to do. Um, uh, Junior, based at bringing the retro gaming to the table, that's all I bring. I have. I do not know anything about what's going on currently in gaming. I could actually care less. I don't have a PS5. I don't have a new Xbox. I haven't even touched the controllers of those new consoles. I even, I don't, I've never played them. And I have no interest in owning either one of them. When they're $99, I will maybe buy one just to add it to the pile of my consoles because I do have a lot of consoles. Mm-hmm. I used to play games, but I, I have to say the PS4 era and on, like, I just... That's really where they lost me. When when Because I don't have time. And when you put the game in and it says... Oh, I need to download an update, and then it takes an hour to download the update. Well, um, um, that's it. That's all the time I have. Yeah, that's that's right. a really like I, 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 it's 
it doesn't uh, like most people are like that. You don't turn it on be- like an hour before you ha- you want to play it. You yeah. Like most people are not gonna wait around. Yeah. And it's, like it's I, I don't insane. get to play every day, right? So like you know if I play a game and then I come back to it like two months later, oh I need to download another update. I'm like I'm not I'm not sitting through this update. Right. I I can put Tetris in, and I it's from 1988, and I turn it on. There's no update. Yeah. It just works. Yeah. I don't need to update the game. It just works. Doom 2 works. There's yeah. no updates. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, it's bizarre. So, I don't know. Uh, Junior writes, I hate that about modern gaming too. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It's stupid. And, like, sell when you sell me the game, it should be done. What, what's with all the updates? I don't need any updates. Just sell me the finished game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. don't put it on the, the don't make it available until you com- you you worked out all the kinks. Yeah, like right. Once you once you put it out there, it should be right. have no bugs, no right. problems. I have piles of PlayStation games like PS4 era that I've never opened. Just a giant stack of PS4 games, Xbox 360 games, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Xbox One games, never opened, brand new, and I fear that by the time I, they actually enter the console that the updates because you know they won't even be online anymore so like when you put it in like you won't even be able to play the game I'm like sorry my super nintendo it works my dreamcast you put the game in it works there's there's no there's no problem here mm-hmm. okay i don't know when they decided that problems were the, the way that they wanted to 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 uh go in terms of an industry yeah. Yeah. Why does this, like, why do I need, like, just put it in, play. What's wrong with it? What happened to that? Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm not, I'm not going to buy a new game unless it works. Um, yeah. No, no. And I also want to be able to finish a game. Like, you know, these games are like 300 hours to beat. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have time for that. You know, I played, like, the last game I, I played, like, was like kind of seriously was Monster Hunter, mm. and that was like 2018 time but, whenever that came but out. But those were like, like infinite. Yeah, that game was infinite. But it like would take we me saw like, some person who was just like, yeah, I put 400 hours into this. And oh right, like, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. We're, I was at a Street Fighter tournament, <laughs> and somebody was playing Monster Hunter on their DS. Yeah. And yeah, I was. We were talking about it. I'm like, oh, I have that game too. He's like, oh, yeah, you should add me and yeah. whatever. And uh, it wasn't, yeah. I don't remember if it was 400 hours, but yeah. it wasn't like a lot of time <sighs> since it's been like the game yeah. was not that old yeah. yet. And uh, it's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I have like 20 hours in this, yeah. and I think I have a lot of time put into this game. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, just can't do it. Albert, uh, uh, Valen, Valen, no, I'm sorry. Albert V. I couldn't pronounce that properly. I'm sorry. I'm big on physical media. You have no idea how big we are on physical media. I'm 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 the physical media king. Um, we love physical media in this household. Um, Adam Brown. I played Ultima Online for twenty plus years. Well, there you go. Twenty years. Yeah. Wow. That's good. Insane. Good. That's a game. That's great. Right. So it still works. Yeah, it still works, and maybe there's, like, new maps and things like that. I don't know. I don't know too much about Ultima, but, like, they're not, I don't know. I don't know if they're constantly changing anything, but all I know is that, like, if I put in a new game into a PlayStation today, you buy it from the store. The game came out today. You buy it, and you put it in the PlayStation, it's going to make you update it, and it's going to be like, oh, I need to download 30 gigs of data. I'm like, I I don't have time. I don't have time for that. It's not, I'm not, I'm not interested. Um, Junior, I put hundreds of hours into Monster Hunter 4. Hold on, let me show you what my Monster Hunter situation looks like. What was even on? What was it? PlayStation 4. Oh. But you weren't, were you playing on PlayStation 4? I yeah. felt like you were playing on something that are portable. No, I had a portable one. Yeah, I just don't understand how, like, they need to be, like, connected to the internet also. Like, unless you're playing with, like, other people on the internet, 
It's like, that's really not necessary. Yeah, this is me. This is uh, Monster Hunter, which got played. I don't know what year this came out in, but I got it when it came out because I thought, oh, okay, this could be something fun to play a little bit here and there. But then it turns out like every mission you go out on, every quest or whatever, it like just takes forever. And then you have to like play forever to get the one thing you need to upgrade your weapon so you can go to the like the next guy. It just took me too long. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. I can't be bothered. And then this got announced and I'm like, oh, okay, let's buy it. Okay, yeah, and then look, you can see it right here. Nice and nice and sealed. Oh, Hasn't much. been opened, haven't touched it. You know, the plastic is starting to crack because it's drying out, like, I just, I just don't play the games. I buy them, I just don't play them. I, I haven't bought a new game in a long time, to be fair. It's, uh, it's not on my radar. Um, uh, White Lightning, I have over, I have 300 hours clocked in on Pokemon Pearl DS. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I haven't cleared a Pokemon game in forever. Um, the Raven, yeah, Monster Hunter is a very grindy game also, not for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so I'm an old school gamer guy, and if we're gonna do more gamer collaborations, it's gonna be old school games that's for sure doom number one that's the top of my list uh i would i would love to do doom pokemon would be in there as well um but if we were to do pokemon it would be gen one gen one pokemon i'm sticking sticking to the classics um the raven i highly recommend red dead redemption 2 if you're looking for a fun game that you can just jump in whenever you want the thing is i don't even have I don't even have time for that. Doom, I can clear a map in 20 minutes if I have 20 minutes before bed, and that's it. But, uh, yeah. You were into Crazy Taxi for Crazy what? Taxi, I played a lot. <laughs> yeah, because a game of Crazy Taxi lasts, for me, you know, it might last, you know, 15 minutes, and that's it. If I was better at it, I could make it go even longer, but mm. I'll play, like, one game and uh, see how long I can go. Um... All right, uh, so that's all right. That's a little bit of everything. We've got snack time yeah. for you today. Another fun, interesting drink, exclusive, at least what I believe to be. Is it exclusive? I'm going to call it an exclusive. It may not be. You guys will have to tell me. But it comes from the good people at the Red Bull Corporation. Not sponsored. We just found a interesting flavor uh they have these you know i don't know if they're just summer flavors but they seem to have these limited flavors that come around from time to time and we thought that this one was distinctly unique so reese's bringing it out we're gonna try the japanese what i believe to be japanese exclusive red bull it may or may not be i could just be lying here but uh, we've got it. We've got two. We're going to try one today, and you guys tell us which one we should try. So we've got blue and pink. What are we? What flavors are we looking at? Uh, the pink one is tropical pink grape fruit flavor. That sounds wonderful. Uh, blue one's lychee flavor. Lychee. Lychee or tropical grapefruit. Are grapefruits a tropical fruit? Now this is a tropical pink grapefruit. I see. So it's like... Probably pink grapefruit with some tropical, tropical flavors. Fruits. Yeah. All right. So I I'm think I'm digging the lychee. I think that's kind of a cool uh, flavor to enjoy. Okay. I like lychee flavored drinks in general. Uh, BD says pink. Uh, Topher Cobra says pink. We'll let a couple more votes come through until uh, wow Oliver oh, with the pink also. Pink. But before we get into even drinking that, we need a Japanese word of the day. Um, to continue in our Japanese language lessons here that we provide on the Naked and Famous Denim live stream, the greatest live stream in the history of the internet. It was Samui or oh, Sumitai. Sumitai. Um, um, <laughs> how do we say energy drink? Energy drink. There you go. So there you have it, everybody. How energy you... drink. Energy drink. 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 Every so, word has every English word did, with add a vowel in between mm -hmm. and you're good right so the pro here's a little japanese language pro tip is that 
there are Japanese words for everything, but there's a lot of English within Japanese. Well, anything that came into Japan that did not exist in Japan in like the 50s <laughs> yeah. came into to the culture after has the name of the um of the english words like pronounced in yeah. japanese way so it's gonna sound bad but if you throw a stereotypical japanese accent on an english word it's probably the japanese word for it well there the... are certain words that that definitely definitely works like that yeah. a lot of words actually especially more modern things yeah. like computer yeah. is a computer, computer. yeah <laughs> so Tele television telebi telebi uh Be beer. beer is biru yeah so like things like that but there are also like we call bread pan yeah so it's like you know came from yeah. a french word cup cup yeah take out though <laughs> so, oh, yes, yeah. so somebody was asking if they said can, can speak in, uh, Japanese. Only the English words in Japanese. Mm -hmm. So, take out is take out, though. Uh, you know, smartphone. 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 Yeah. Smaho. We also yeah. tend to shorten, shorten words. long words. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in French, smartphone is it's a smartphone. smartphone. But in Quebec, they made a French word for it. And it's telephone intelligent, so it's an intelligent phone. So yeah. telephone intelligent. If you used that in France, they would laugh at you. Yeah. But in Quebec, that's how you do it. Um, uh, okay. Um, let's get into. Yeah. Um, let's get into pink yeah. grapefruit tropical, tropical pink edition grapefruit yeah. flavor. Yeah. Also, this says here. Tropical pink grapefruit flavor. Perfect. So, so it's all English. Yeah. If you think about yeah. it. Uh, let's hit it up. Okay, so. We brought out the nice champagne glass. Fantastic. Look at that handsome glass right here. That is. It's also an ice cream glass. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, it's smells very tropically. Tropical yeah. yeah. I don't smell the grapefruit so much. Not at all. All right, let's do it. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's nice. It's it kind of tastes like grape. What? Maybe. No. Is it? It's very fruity. Like tropical fruity, but it's got the tanginess, I guess, of, of grapefruit a little bit. Grape or grapefruit? Grapefruit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I taste grape. I, I taste like purple grape juice in here. I don't know. No, but this is the best uh, Red Bull I've ever tasted. It I doesn't have, have the medicine taste of Red Bull. Not even... Yeah. Although these series, like, not the... The original has that medicine taste, but, like, these colored, like, fruit flavor series yeah. tend to not have the... Yeah. Like, they figured out a way yeah. to get rid of that. If somebody gave this to you... Like, and you didn't, like, you know, they poured it out in a cup for you. You would think it was just, like, a fruity soda. Yeah, I you wouldn't, wouldn't be you able wouldn't to tell You wouldn't know if it was an energy, energy drink. drink. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like this. This is getting a... Oh, this is great. This is, like, eight something. Yeah, I was going to go seven, eight on this one. I okay. like it. Mm -hmm. This is good. I would get this again. This is going to get God again. Like, if I need a Red Bull, I want this one. Yeah. Yeah, All I right. want this one over original Red Bull. That's for sure. Um, Sour Turtle writes, I've only ever had one Red Bull and it tasted like acid. Red Bull is a... Acquired yeah. taste. You, you either like it or you don't. Um, yeah. I don't <laughs> mind it, but it's not my favorite, actually. Right. I, yeah. Like, I think I only get it because of the, the ability to keep me, you know, energized. Right. But this one, I would choose to drink it. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a, a delight. It's a delight. So there you go. If you are in Japan or if you happen to see this spring edition tropical grapefruit, red grapefruit. Tropical pink grapefruit. Pink grapefruit because it's a pink can. Uh, go and buy it. I, I recommend it. Not sponsored, but uh, yeah, the uh, 
Red Bull Corporation, thank you for this wonderful uh, product that you've made. Um, before we go, I'm going to answer one question. Radiant Being asks, are we allowed to ask about Wonder Looper here, or do we need to keep things strictly about naked payments? We can answer some Wonder Looper questions. If you yeah. if you have got one, throw one out there. We'll we'll uh, and then we'll leave the live stream yeah. on that. No. On Tatenyoko, we carry Wonder Looper, yeah. and you know this is as much of a Tatenyoko live stream as uh, Naked and Famous mm -hmm. live stream. So. Yeah, and 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 yeah, we're 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 uh, we're interrelated. Mm -hmm. So uh, Cathedral Ring writes way better than Monster. Monster is another. I never really yeah. got into Monster. Yeah. I, I think it's designed for young. Young young, it's got the flavor profile for a young man. <laughs> yeah, it's like Mountain Dew. Girls don't drink Mountain Dew. I don't know. Right? I guess not. I mean, I, I'm just, don't... It's just my presumption. I'm just, you know. I, I guess yeah. you don't see girls drinking a lot of Mountain Dew, but you do see a certain type of men drinking yeah, a lot of like Mountain Dew. Yeah, like Mountain Dew and Monster are in the same, to me, is the same demographic of guy. Like their, their sales are probably like 85% men or moms buying it for their kids. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah. I used to drink like when the the like energy drink was like starting to be good like a you know a big thing. I was drinking uh, Rockstar more than uh, Red uh, Bull. Right. But Rockstar went away, huh? I don't know. I haven't. I, I don't know. Raphael writes, "Monster is my water at work." At one point, um, the I guess the local monster rep liked yeah. Naked and Famous. He was a fan. And he would come to our office in the monster monster truck. I mean, it wasn't like a, a like a monster <laughs> truck, but it, his, it was a huge monster right. branded truck. And he would drop off like 20, 30 cases like every couple of weeks. And at one point, my office was just cases of monster, just cases of it. And like, I'm like, there's only so much of this I can drink. They had a coffee one that I, that I liked, but... Even then, I couldn't finish a whole can of it. It was, even for me, it was too much. And our warehouse guys, they drank that like water. Like, they, they, they just come to my office and like, can I, uh, can I get a couple of cans? I'm like, take as many as you want. And like, our recycling bins were just filled to the brim with Monster. I'm like, I am responsible for the diabetes of these guys. I'm just like, take it easy on the Monster guys. Like... Yeah, not only diabetes, but also I don't think it's good for your like heart or something. Yeah. Like it's it's too much. It might have been a bit much. Uh, but yeah, thank you to the uh, to the monster guy. I forgot his name, but uh, he was he, he was very nice. He used to show up all the time, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for for delivering that. At, at one point, we like Red Bull would bring us drinks when we did the Street Fighter collaboration. We had uh, they brought us because they were also doing a Street Fighter um, collab. They brought us a lot of monster, and we had those uh, in the store. So if, uh, we were we were giving those out uh, mm -hmm. with uh, people coming yeah. into those street fighter collabs. The great things yeah. about these energy drink companies are they're just so generous with freebies. with promos. Yeah. yeah, they like they like the promos, <laughs> and it works. And and it, clearly, it has still worked. And they didn't mm -hmm. even pay for this one. Um, okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Any questions? I guess. Uh, I guess we'll leave it there. Um, the Raven writes, I definitely seen women drinking Monster, specifically the white or blue can. All right. Um, and I guess, Stephen, uh, some people might be asking about uh, Wonder Looper Ultimate Pima Teas. Pima Teas, I'm not sure if that's the question. Um, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't see it. But uh, anyhow, if you have questions about Wonder Looper, you can ask us in Instagram. Just uh, leave a comment on uh, a post and we'll be happy to answer your questions there. Or you can ask us next week right here on the greatest live stream in the history of all live streams. Not just raw denim, but it is the greatest raw denim live stream as well. We'll be back again next week, 7 p.m. Eastern for another uh, edition of the stream. Uh, have your questions bottled up, saved up for then. We'll be sure to answer them for you. Mm -hmm. Watch out for the long, long guy coming out this Monday, one day only. Ooh, uh, and uh, we'll be back again soon. Uh, tell, any any closing messages for the yeah, world? Yeah, tell your tallest friends about it. 
They might, they might appreciate it. Tell that. your tall king friends about the long, long guy or your short princes, your short kings as well. Because the long, long guy is for everybody. That's it true. It fits every Inclusive. body. So there you have it. Do something nice for yourselves and especially do something nice for somebody else. We will see you guys again next week right here. And we'll leave it there. All right. Goodbye, everyone.